It is time for, <laughs> I was going to say everybody's favorite segment, or nobody's favorite segment, the new segment called Facts Are Your Friends. Look at this cool little thing over here. That looks awesome. Way to go. Who made that backdrop? Oh, one gosh. of the zeros yeah, and one ones of kids. Yeah, one of designers, but it's been a while, so we've had They're it. Amazing. Awesome. Facts Are Your Friends. All right. So... I'm kind of breaking my own rule here, and here's what it is. I don't usually like to read old things unless they're old nerd articles, and I don't like to – I don't like clickbaity stuff, and I don't like to go down that rabbit hole because I've learned from my journalist friends that a lot of things they write, they don't even believe in them They because their job isn't to write – Articles that are believable, their art, their job is to get clicks, and so they make things the most clickbaity. But enough of you sent me this article, and I guess it's like an editorial piece, and it's old. It's a year old. It's from it's almost a year and a half, June sixteenth, twenty twenty one. And I'm not even going to give the author's name because I don't want to give this author credence. The name of the article is called "Don't Play with Your Kids." Seriously. That's the name of the article. Don't play with your kids, seriously. Here's the way the article goes. My older son recently made a vending machine out of a cardboard box. My daughter created clothing for her, Barbies out of paper and tape. By the way, it's the New York Times. My baby went through the hall closet describing the shoes in a babble that was only one-eighth English. All three participate in a steampunk-inspired world of their own creation, yada, yada, yada. Their games are going well. The kids are murmuring, saying to one another, pretend we or what if we or the queen must be assassinated. Lots of screaming. Meanwhile, I'm doing the crossword. The author goes on to say, and this is verbatim. I have three kids under 10 who don't expect or even want to play with me. It took some practice, but over time, we've all learned we're better off doing our own thing. The kids without stodgy parental interference and my husband and I unhooked from the assumption that we have to play to be present. Now, here's why I'm choosing a comment on this in a Facts of Your Friends segment. This is the kind of arrogant over-academization, and this is two guys, a guy with two PhDs. I know academics. This is somebody who has thought themselves into a pretzel and has created an outcome academically that they wanted and has reverse engineered this narrative that this makes some sort of sense in its insanity it's madness and quite honestly it's heartbreaking goes on to say it wasn't always this way as a toddler um my first child wasn't digging in the trash or chewing on the couch cushions. He was rampaging through the house with an imaginary weapon. He never listened because he was a toddler. He tried to run into traffic because he's a toddler. It's what they do. The constant wrangling and vigilance was so exhausting. You mean parenting? That my husband and I didn't have the energy to play the way my son preferred. Anything that involved full body contact or pretend violence. Instead, I said no and stop all day long. You mean instead of putting down the crossword puzzle and getting on all fours and making eye contact with your son and touching him on the face and letting him feel seen and heard? That just would have been too inconvenient because you're working on the crossword puzzle. I was a terrible playmate. I felt guilty and frustrated. A tired mother who did little beyond obstructing. So you quit on him. You quit on him. He's just too hard. He's too rambunctious, too energetic. But when I, my son was about three, I realized his fictive worlds were vivid enough to continue without me. All he needed at first was a listener. After a while, he would head into his bedroom alone to transform it into a place that lived in his mind. This, my friends, is a trauma response. This is a child who is desperately trying to make connection with the adults in its life, in his life, and whose adults are too busy with the crossword puzzle or Instagram or their show 
or work or their weight loss program or their working out program or whatever else they're focused on. And there comes a point that a child will fold in on himself or herself and head off alone into a room. And their body will compress their feelings and will channel them inside their own mind. Little by little, my husband and I would stretch the time our son could safely play by himself. It was freedom for all of us. This is insanity. Yes, young kids can learn to play by themselves and it's important that they develop autonomy and all that. That's fine. But the idea that you're taking a three-year-old and teaching them to be alone, this is the cornerstone of selfishness and madness. It's madness. When you have a kid, you give up the crossword puzzle. Adults. When you have a kid that's rambunctious, you join in with them. You don't beat it out or neglect it out of them. When you have a child who is quiet and reserved. Dude, I listen to 90s country on the way to work sometimes. Do you think I like it? No, I want to set my eardrums on fire. But my son loves it, and I'm making connections with him. The other day, we spent nine hours, nine agonizing hours in the woods, hunting. You know what came out? No things, nothing. I would have given up and left. And when I said, hey, you want to go? No, dad, no. It's good. This is good for us. So I sat with him, hour after hour because my presence is a gift do i like it no my perfect edit i'm terrible at it i'm working on this all the time but i'm not partnering with my wife to see how we can slowly reduce the amount of time that our kids have access to us so that they in turn have to figure out how to do life alone Look around. We've created the loneliest generation in human history with this kind of nonsense. Here it goes. Uh, I can be critical. I'm distracted by work and life. I have a bad temper and I don't like to play, especially pretend or anything with dolls or figures or any games that ask me to hide or wield a Nerf gun. My motto is moms don't play. The other context also applies. I do not play. I can't say my approach is right for everyone. It's a right for no one. Because when you have kids, <laughs> here's, the, here's the most important part. I know that it resonates for me in part because of how I was raised. I have no memories of my parents playing with me. I can remember reading together and they're swimming with me in the ocean, but they weren't involved in the fashion shows I filmed with my sisters and they didn't help me make my magazine kid stuff either. Not once did they dine at my fictional restaurant. Could this be why, as an adult, your kids have a mom that doesn't play? Or that you're critical and have a bad temper and you're distracted by work because you have a little child inside wondering, What is so bad about my little restaurant that my parents won't even bother to come see me? What is it about me that's so bad that my parents won't play? What is so awesome about that crossword puzzle that makes it more worthy of my mom and dad's attention than me? And that makes for an exhausted, bitter, critical, angry adult. Maybe you're the living result of your relationship-free childhood. Maybe. Maybe that's not fair. But when I see this kind of gymnastic nonsense, it's academic gymnastics, really, I don't want to be bothered by my kids because they're annoying to me. Kids are boring. They're messy. They're loud. They're rambunctious. They run into traffic. Or they just sit there and do nothing. They poop 111 times a day. They're annoying. They're bothering me. So I'm going to work backwards and create a narrative that makes this all okay. Oh, they don't want to even play with me. 
They just want to sit in their own mind in their room alone. It's nonsense. Parents, do the exact opposite of this article. Play with your kids. Invite your kids with you everywhere you possibly can. It's going to take longer. It's going to be annoying. There's going to be certain conversations you can't have because your kids are sitting right there. And if you really have to have a deep, hard, private conversation, cool. Go have adult time. That's awesome. That's important. My wife and I do couples dates and we all go out to a restaurant. There's no kids. It's great. But if I'm going to help a buddy of mine fix a thing, my kid comes with me. If I'm going hunting with a buddy, my kid comes with me. If I need to go get the car work done, my kids come with me because I need them to see how the world works and how their dad interacts with adults and how their mom interacts with play with your kids. And there's times I get on all fours and I'm sitting at a restaurant and my daughter, I don't understand what we're eating. I don't understand what we're doing. I think there's wolves and dragons running around. I don't know what's happening, but I'm there and I'm not a great parent. But I understand the neurodevelopmental importance of this, the socio psycho the psychosocial development. I'm just getting so frustrated. Listen, moms and dads, play with your kids. Be present with your kids. Let your kids not just see, but feel how valuable they truly are. Teach them about relationship. Teach them about connection. Teach them about relationships that are more important than the crossword puzzle. And if you find yourself bitter or critical or angry or someone, a dad who just doesn't play, be an adult and work on those things. Do what you can to heal. Be less critical. Be more supportive. You don't know how to play? Learn how to play. Parents, play with your kids. Seriously. <laughs>